I wanted to mention Asbab al Mu'ina, things that will help and aid a person to memorize the Quran and not forget it. What are practical steps that a person can take in order to memorize the Quran and keep it with them so they don't forget it a lot? The following is what a person should do Ta'ahud al Quran wa mudawama tu qiraatihi. That a person's consistency in reading the Qur'an and go, going over it a lot. If a person does muraja'ah, revision of the Qur'an, and keeps going over it a lot, the person will learn the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith, like the person who's holding onto the Qur'an and has memorized the Qur'an, that it's like a camel that is tied. If the person comes back to it and ties it and makes sure that it's there and overlooks it, then that camel will never, never get away from him. But if he doesn't, he leaves it and he walks away from it, then that camel will what? Ya ikhwa, if you hunted a deer today and you got the deer, what would you do? You would tie it strong, right? You would have to tie it strong and you would always have to overlook it. If it's there, has it left? Has it moved? Has it the rope tightened? Is it still... You overlook it just so it doesn't leave. The Quran is like that. The person has to keep looking over it. Making sure that it doesn't what? It doesn't get away from him. The second thing, brothers, that helps you memorize the Quran and also to keep the Quran is at-takhafuf min al-dhulubi wal ma'asi. To lessen or to stay away from sins and shortcomings and errors and going against Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah's commands. Why? Because brothers, we all know what does sin do to blessings of Allah? The ma'asi, the sins, and the dhunub, what do they do? To zilu ni'am. They remove blessings, don't they? And isn't the Quran a blessing? Isn't the Quran not a blessing? The Quran is a blessing. The sins, it destroys blessings. That's what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ that there is not a calamity that befalls you. The only reason why this calamity fell onto you and it's the way it is, is because of that which your hands have put forward. So calamities, trials and tribulations fall on you, adab, because of what? Because of sins. So, if a person is not given the Qur'an, what is it? It's a punishment. The best of speeches are not being given to you. The reason is because there are obstacles and things that are standing in the way. Also, the other thing that helps is التخفف من الهموم والأحزان والتعوذ منها Staying away from being a person who is excessively stressed. A person who is what? Depressed. Lesson on that. How can a person lesson on that? The things that make a person stressed is when they connect their heart other than, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Placing things like the dunya in your, play, in your way. What are you doing? Placing in your sight the dunya and giving so much importance to it, it starts to stress you out. And when a student of knowledge or a person who's learning the Quran places other things in his way, stresses increase. And when the stress stresses increases and the responsibility increases, what happens? You're unable to memorize. That's what Allah tells us in the Quran. Allah has not placed in the person two hearts. You can't have one leg in the dunya and another leg you have to memorize the Qur'an. How would you memorize when you give your whole heart to this thing? So lesson on every other obstacles on the way. Get rid of it. The other thing is increasing in what? Asking or expressing to Allah and showing Him that you are grateful for what He's done for you. Shukur. Coming with shukur, gratitude. Gratitude allows you to gain more than what you have. As Allah said in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah tells us in the ayah, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you show gratitude, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I will increase for you. You memorize 10 surahs, if you show gratitude, I'll give you another 10. If you show another, I'll give you more. Allah will increase it for you. وَلِذَلِكَ دَعُوا لَمَا They say that shukur is what? It is qaydun lil mawjood wa saydun lil mafqood. Shukur is what? Qaydun lil mawjood. Shukur restricts, 
holds down for you what you already have. Qaid. Do you know what a qaid is? Qaid is what you tie a, a camel and a horse or whatever with. You knot it down with that. Sah? It's what you hold it down with. Shukur is what holds down the blessing that you already have. It will hold it down for you. It will make it not escape from you. Wasaydun lil mafqood. And that which you don't have, that's not in your possession, it hunts it for you. Shaid means to hunt. It will go out there and it will bring it to you. That's what shukur does. It, it allows what you have to be with you and it also brings for you more that you don't, you don't have. And all of that is found in the ayah that Allah says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Also, what helps the person memorize the Qur'an is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him to increase you in knowledge. Supplicating is from the most powerful weapon that a person has by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives you what? That He gives you the keys and opens your heart to the Qur'an because a person hasn't got the ability to get what is with Allah except to please Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said that Jibreel came to me and he blew into my soul that there's not a person on the face of this earth except that they're going to eat the provision that was written for them. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الطلب, Then perfect, perfect how you try to look for your rizq since it's written for you. Then perfect the way that you try to look for your rizq. And then look what the Prophet said, فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُنَالُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ because you will not attain what you will not attain that which is with Allah except in a way that pleases him. So what is it that's with Allah? The Quran. You won't attain what's with him except in a way that pleases him by begging him. And Allah loves subhanahu wa ta'ala when his hum, stu, uh, slave, sorry, when his slave humbles himself, lifts his hands up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves and he will give to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what helps memorize the Qur'an. This is what? Memorize the Qur'an. Revision is the first one, brothers. Al-Imam al-Bukhari, Muhammad, Ibn Ismail, Ibn Ibrahim. Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, was once asked. And one of his students came up to him and he asked him, he said to Bukhari, do you know anything, any medication that if I take, it will help with my memory? Bukhari was the right person to ask this question to, right? Yeah, his memorization, it was an ayah, it was a miracle in the hiv. So he said, no, I don't know a medication or some, some, something a person can take that if they eat, their memory would be good. I don't know, he said. Uh, there's no particular fruit or food that should be eaten that will bring your memory. Uh, but he said, I do know what can help the person's memory and he said that it's two things. Nahmatul Rajul. A Rajul. A person's drive and will. The fact that the person wants this so badly and he's putting every effort that he has. And the second one is, brothers, what? And the second one is Wamudawamatul Nadar. When the person excessively looks at this thing so much. Muraj, a revision. There's not a person who's memorized so much except that he's beating you on revision. He's beating you with what? With revision. So the person should do that when it comes to the Qur'an. And as you can see, the Qur'an was made for the hearts. Where was it made for? The place that the Qur'an is meant to be in is the heart. When the Qur'an came down, whose heart did it come down on? Huh? It started off on the heart of the Prophet. Okay, brothers. And the Sahabas, where did they memorize it from? Look at the ahadith when you read them. That they used to say, Allamana Rasulullah, the Messenger taught us Salatul istisha, Salatul Istikhara, Kama Kana Yu Alimun Ayatam Kitabilai. That the Prophet used to teach us Istikhara, he taught us it. The way Salatul Istikhara and the dua to say, the way he taught us an ayah of the Quran. The companions are always they compare it to that. That the Prophet taught us this thing as he would teach us an ayah from the Qur'an. So they took it from his mouth. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and he said, 
I took 70 surahs min fi rasulillahi from the Prophet's mouth, directly from his mouth. Another hadith, Surah Al Qaf, Surah Qaf. What did the uh, narrator, the female narrator, she said, I memorized Surah Al Qaf because the Prophet used to read it in the khutbah and I memorized it from his mouth. So she wouldn't, she wouldn't write it. That shows you from the Prophet's heart to her heart to the students of those she, that's how the Quran used to be passed on. It wasn't in bookshelves and it wasn't kept in what? On the walls. And it wasn't put into a frame. A lot of people, they have Ayatul Kursi on the wall. Hey, read it. He doesn't know it. And there's an Ayatul Kursi. Huh? On the what? On the wall. But he doesn't know it. So the Quran was made for the heart. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Look what Allah says. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ in another ayah, what did he say? وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُذِيرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينٍ So the Qur'an, can say, this is the relationship between the Qur'an and what? The Qur'an and the, the Qur'an and the heart. So that's where it should be in. And we should always realize it's not about a matter of writing it. It's a matter of trying to memorize the Qur'an and keep it with us. May Allah make us from the people of the Qur'an.